basically this lecture is an introduction to the subject of heat transfer okay so we will have a very short description of what the subject is all about and uh, i feel that the name is very self descriptive it is uh, directly giving the idea that what might be the contents of the particular subject okay so what happens is that suppose whenever there is a process so thermodynamics tells us that a process an event or an activity means that a system is interacting with its surroundings right and that interaction is either in form of uh, mass transfer it is in form of work transfer or it is in form of heat transfer isn't it and this heat transfer is in particular the transfer of thermal energy as a result of temperature difference so suppose if the sun is shining outside i can feel the heat of the sun inside this room right so if my if my room is the system is it it is interacting with the surroundings by gaining heat from it now that particular heat is being transferred through a solid wall so what i want to know is that what are the micro or macro level activities going inside the wall which are responsible for this particular interaction for the transfer of heat okay now this uh, now understanding this is what is known as heat transfer okay so these uh, micro or macro level activities we will call them as mechanisms so heat transfer will give you an idea that what is the mechanism this subject will give you an idea that what is the mechanism of heat transfer during a process now obviously whenever a process goes on there are some factors which influence it for example uh, particularly talking of this heat transfer from the solid wall it is experimental observation that if suppose this wall is made of metal or it is made of uh, wood or it is made of uh, a material like concrete then each material would give a different rate of heat transfer particularly in case of metals i will feel very hot inside but in that in cases of wood or concrete uh, it would be comparatively much better right it will be comparatively cooler so the material is affecting the rate of heat transfer right so uh, and also if the thickness of the wall is increased the rate of heat transfer decreases and if the thickness is decreased the rate of heat transfer increases so these are the different factors influencing it like material in the and the design of the wall so we will have an understanding that what are the different factors which influence these micro and macro level activities right now what we will do is that there are some experimental observations or laws which mathematically express and these mechanisms and factors for example there are some uh, there is a law known as fourier's law of conduction which quantifies the rate of heat transfer during a particular mechanism known as conduction similarly there is stefan boltzmann law which quantifies the rate of heat transfer during a particular mechanism known as radiation and once we are through with this law with these laws our knowledge of heat transfer is complete and then comes in mathematical modeling so using these laws using these laws we will try to frame the mathematical models that is the differential equations corresponding to various problems we will solve those differential equations to get the solutions of those problems right so using these laws finally we will solve engineering or real world problems so this is what the scope of the subject is to understand the heat transfer during a process and and to mathematically model it in order to optimize it that is to maximize or minimize it fine so after having an understanding of scope it is very important to have an understanding of what the applications of the subject are and believe me this subject is involved almost every field of engineering whether it's mechanical engineering like power generation or manufacturing whether it's electronics equipment whether it's some biological or chemical experiment everywhere the concepts of heat transfer are required but before moving on to these applications since we are preparing particularly for gate so it is also important to have a look that how this subject can help us in gate right so i uh, i hope everyone knows that for every engineering discipline the gate is of 100 marks and it is conducted by iits right so if we talk of uh, its acronym that is 
graduate aptitude test of engineering for engineering right so what IITs want to do is they want to check that what you have learned in your engineering years fine in your college years so they realize what they do is they realize the relative importance of different subjects in re, uh, for an engineer in real life for example if we talk of mathematics we know that mathematics is involved everywhere isn't it similarly if we talk of manufacturing we know that every equipment belonging to any field requires manufacturing process for its physical existence isn't it so these two three subjects are very important so what they have done is that out of total 100 marks out of total 100 marks, near about 45 marks go to general aptitude, mathematics and manufacturing or production technology. Fine? Fine? So what are the remaining subjects? The remaining subjects are there is basic thermodynamics, there is refrigeration and psychometry, then there is a portion of uh, power plant engineering, Rankine cycle and all. Then there is IC and automobile engines, uh, heat transfer, fluid mechanics. Now in design and mechanics, there is applied mechanics, TOM, SOM, MD. Uh, again, then industrial research, industrial engineering and operational research. So there are about 10 to 11 subjects. And what we are left with? We are left with only 53 marks for these 11 subjects. Isn't it? So if I talk of per subject weightage, out of these 53 marks, the per subject weightage will simply become 5.3 marks. And suppose that there is a subject which is contributing you 6 to 7 marks in these 53 marks. Isn't it? So the subject is going to be very important. Right? And that particular subject is the subject of heat transfer. And believe me, scoring these 6 to 7 marks is very easy. The subject is very easy. It is totally based on some experimental observations, the idea of thermodynamics, differential equations and some concepts of fluid mechanics. So if you dedicate uh, 35 to 40 hours of these lectures very sincerely, very attentively, you will definitely score these whole, all these marks. And suppose if you were scoring somewhere between 65 to 68 marks without heat transfer, then an extra 6 to 7 marks of heat transfer will directly give you a jump from ranks beyond 2500s to below 600 or 700 and might be even 400s or 500s, isn't it? So uh, in that case, you will definitely ensure your call uh, from a good PSU for interview or your seat in IITs for master's program. Is it? So your future will be secured. So this is what the importance of the subject is for your gate examination for your future. Fine. So now let us move on to the engineering applications of the subject. And uh, for that, what I'll do is, I will have a look at the energy form which we are dealing with, which is known as heat. So we already know the uh, definition of heat. And uh, what I want to say is that the this particular form of uh, energy is the most interesting form and uh, in fact the most important form. So much important that even the existence of life on earth is a result of heat. See how? Uh, let us talk of uh, any process, any process whether artificial or natural, that process will so involve some kind of heat transfer. So if I take a very basic system, the most important system of our solar system, that is the sun, the sun is radiating heat. And obviously it is doing so because if we stand outside on a sunny day, we can feel that the atmosphere is hot. And if it is cloudy, the sun is shining behind, behind the, those clouds, the atmosphere becomes comparatively cool. So the sun is radiating, sun is emitting some heat which is reaching the earth. And this uh, this heat is responsible for the appropriate temperature range on earth in uh, within which the biological systems can exist as well as they can function. Okay, so for the functionality of biological systems, for the functionality and existence of these systems, the heat from the sun is important and not only the temperature range, two very fundamental processes, photosynthesis which gives us food and oxygen to breathe food to live, food to eat and oxygen to breathe as wa and water cycle the supply of fresh water 
Okay, so both these fundamental processes involve heat as a pro in, uh, directly consume heat. The process of photosynthesis uh, combines carbon dioxide and water molecules by utilizing light or heat. Light is a form of heat to give us food molecules as well as oxygen to breathe, right? And water cycle is based on absorption of heat from the sun as a result of which the uh, water in the sea gets evaporated and then it for results in formation of clouds which go to the mainland and precipitate to give rain. So uh, this is how we get the fresh water supply, right? Not only this, even in our households, we are uh, directly utilizing, uh, all, we are utilizing heat. For example, for cooking food, for boiling water, for drying of clothes, right? Uh, and uh, if I talk of us, we are mechanical engineers. So as mechanical engineers, uh, I think heat transfer is involved in almost every process. See how we are involved in power generation. So steam power plant that is high pressure, high temperature steam through the turbine. So how will you will get how you will get that steam by boiling of water by supply of heat to the water, right? Automobile engine. So how uh, how the, the work is produced? The high pressure gases, high pressure exhaust gases inside the combustion chamber, they push the piston down. Now, how was that pressure developed? It was developed by the heat released during combustion of fuel, right? So again, an involvement of heat. Uh, use of solar uh, solar cells, that is the absorption of heat from the sun, and that particular heat is in form of radiation. Right now, if we talk of manufacturing, uh, casting, melting of metals, melting of solids. So again, an application of heat, uh, injection molding, again, melting of plastic, right? Now, uh, welding, again, formation of weld pool by application of heat, uh, heat treatment that is controlling the rate of heat transfer to or from the material to alter its mechanical properties, whether it's powder metallurgy, heat transfer is involved. In fact, even in case of machining, if we are not directly consuming heat, the heat is produced as a byproduct, isn't it? And if we do not control the rate of dissipation of this heat, the heat is produced as a result of friction. A portion of it gets stored in the tool, a portion of it gets stored in the work material, and if it is not dissipated properly, this might alter the rate of heat transfer. Uh, sorry, uh, the mechanical properties of the material and the tool, isn't it? So again, heat transfer uh, is important, right? So, uh, so if you can take any example, you will find either the heat is consumed directly or it is produced as a byproduct. And not only it is produced or involved, it is so important that it guides the mechanics, it guides the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of the process. So if you want to optimize of the process, we need to understand that what is the mechanism of heat transfer during that process, what are the factors which are going to influence it, we, how we can mathematically model it, and then solve the mathematical model to get the appropriate input parameters for the most appropriate heat transfer rate for the most effective and efficient process. Okay. So how you will do this? Obviously, you will do this by the concepts of the subject of heat transfer. So this is what the application of subject is and it is involved in uh, design of uh, uh, power plant equipment, it is involved in design of refrigerators and air conditioners, it is involved in design of buildings and steel structures, uh, in that of uh, uh, cooking vessels, uh, cooking range and uh, household equipments like fans, motors, uh, electronic equipment. So everywhere heat transfer, the concepts of heat transfer are involved. Even we are using these concepts regularly. Suppose the food that I am going to eat during the lunch, if it is hot, I will try to cool it and I will do it how? By blowing air on the spoon, right? By blowing air on the food in the spoon. So what I am doing is I am uh, converting the mode of free uh, mode of heat transfer from free convection to forced convection okay now suppose if i am cooling uh, feeling cold i will wear a jacket now what a jacket is it is a wool it is a woolen material which is an insulator and it has pores inside it so what we have done is we have increased the insulation to heat transfer by wearing woolen clothes clothes so this is decreasing the rate of heat conduction from the environment to my, to the human body fine so we are using the concepts everywhere and it is important in almost every engineering field and uh, uh, field of science, fine. So let us have a look.
So what uh, we are going to do is basically in heat transfer we will study at R level, at BTEC level for gate examination. What we will do is we will understand the three mechanisms of heat transfer and try to solve some basic problems, try to learn the mathematics of some basic problems. So in this particular uh, lecture what I am going to tell you is I will give you three basic examples through which you can understand about the mechanisms and differentiate those three mechanisms from one another. Fine. So let us have look at these mechanisms one by one and the first mechanism of heat transfer that I am going to deal with is that of heat conduction. Okay. So for this let us take an example of the heat coming from outside to the inside of the room through this solid wall. Okay. So here is the sun. Here is the sun which is shining out brightly and this is the room wall. This is the room inside which I am standing. Fine. Now suppose we are in Delhi. So because of the heat of the sun, because of the heat of the sun, the temperature of the outside wall is near about 48 degrees Celsius. Okay. And might be even higher. Might be even 50, 52 degrees Celsius. Okay. And the temperature of the inside of the wall is somewhere near to 35 degrees Celsius. So obviously some heat transfer is going to take place. This is what the uh, second law of thermodynamic states. So whenever there is a temp uh, temperature gradient, some heat transfer occurs from the higher temperature region to the inner temperature region. And what we logically can say is that within the wall, the temperature is decreasing from the outer surface to the inner surface. And this you can prove experimentally also by using a thermometer and touching and uh, finding out the temperature of different layers of the wall, right? So the temperature will be decreasing from outermost surface to the innermost surface. Now let us have a look that what is the mechanism, what are the activities going on inside this solid wall which are responsible for this heat transfer, okay? So what I am going to do is, let us draw this wall on a larger scale. What I am going to do is, we will draw this wall on a larger scale and what the concepts of thermodynamics say that the temperature of a substance is basically a measure of micro or molecular level activities going on within the substance. For example, if you remember that from kinetic theory of gases, we say that if the temperature of the gas is T, then within the gas, the molecules are moving randomly with an average velocity of 3 R bar T by M where M is the molecular mass and R bar is the universal gas constant. What I mean to say is that if I talk of this particular room air and the room is closed, so the mass of air cannot move inside, um, uh, cannot move outside of the air of the room or no air from outside can come inside as a bulk. So there is no bulk velocity of this room air there is no velocity of the center of mass of this room air. But if we will zoom inside the mass uh, through maybe a use of electron microscope, what we will see is that the molecules are moving randomly. For example, that molecule is moving from here to here. One molecule is moving upward, the other is moving horizontal, someone is moving back, someone is moving in towards the front. They are moving randomly with different velocities. Okay? They are randomly behaving. And the, uh, basically, because of this motion, the translational energy, the kinetic energy they possess is known as thermal energy. And the measure of this thermal energy, measure of this mo uh, molecular motion is known as temperature. Okay. So this is what the scenario of a, of a gas or a liquid is because of its temperature. And if we talk of solids, since the uh, molecular packing of a solid is very close, the molecules or atoms of a solid are not allowed to leave a mean position but what they are doing is they are vibrating about a mean position with amplitudes as small as that of molecular or atomic dimensions okay so within a gas or a liquid which are fluids the molecules are moving randomly but within a solid the molecules are vibrating about a mean position and the intensity of this vibration intensity of this uh, uh, vibrational energy thermal energy is known as temperature fine so this is, this is the solid wall which we were talking about and its outer surface was at temperature 48 degrees Celsius. 
while its inner surface was at temperature somewhere about 35 degrees Celsius. And what we are saying is that the temperature is decreasing from the outwards to the inwards. So we can say that different layers, different layers of the wall are at different temperatures. Okay. So let us call this outermost layer as O and the other layers are as A, B, C and D. These layers are very thin. Okay. So the outermost layer is at 48 degrees Celsius. So innermost layer may be at 47. 46, 45 and so on, so on. So this is the innermost layer, fine. Now these layers have different temperatures. So the molecules of these layers will be vibrating with different intensities. So what I can say is that the vibrational energy of molecules of O is higher, that of A is comparatively lower and that of B is even lower, right? Right? So when the vibrating molecules of O will collide with the molecules of A, so whenever two balls collide and these balls have different energies, so the ball with higher energy transfers its own energy to the lower ball, right? So there will be a transfer of the kinetic energy or the thermal energy from O to A because of the collision of the vibrating molecules. And this vibration is known as lattice vibration. This vibration is known as what? Lattice vibration. Similarly, the molecules of A are at energy higher than molecules of the B. So again, there will be a transfer of kinetic energy or thermal energy. Similarly, a transfer of thermal energy between us B and C. So this way, the thermal energy is being transferred from the outermost layers or the layer at higher temperature to the layer at inner temperature because of the inter because of the collisions of the vibrating molecules fine so this particular mechanism is known as conduction okay so basically conduction is a result of heat transfer due to micro level activities and one of these activities is lattice vibration apart from lattice vibration apart from lattice vibration there are some other factors also which contribute to conduction and those factors are free electron transfer, free electron transfer and diffusion with intermolecular collision, diffusion with intermolecular collision, okay. So uh, if I talk of the second point which is free electron transfer, it is specific to metallic solids only because metallic solids are electropositive in nature and whenever their atoms gain some high temperature, they gain some heat, electrons are ejected out. Now these electrons move from high temperature atoms to the low temperature atoms carrying energy with themselves, carrying thermal energy with themselves that is transfer of thermal energy or transfer of heat. Right? And this particular factor, which is diffusion or in, an intermolecular trans collision, I shouldn't say collision, okay? This is specific to fluids and gases. Fluids, that is liquids and gases. So we will talk about these points in more detail when we will uh, study the same uh, subject in our uh, proper course. Fine? So this is what uh, the mechanism of conduction is okay and it is based on certain molecular level mo or micro level activities which are like is vibration free transfer and diffusion with intermolecular collisions now let us have a look at the second mechanism also which is known as convection fine so for particularly for convection what i am uh, doing is i am taking the example of boiling of water okay so uh, so suppose in the morning I was boiling some water at home for some cooking purpose and for that I had a pan, right? Now what I did is I forgot, what I did is I forgot to put the water in the pan and pla place that pan on the cooking range. So my uh, pan, my pan came to a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. It came to a temperature of what? 90 degrees Celsius, okay? So this is the solid pan and it is at a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. So I realized that I didn't pour, pour the water in the pan and then I had some water mass which was at 30 degrees Celsius and I poured that water mass inside the pan. So this is my water mass which is at 30 degrees Celsius while the solid pan is at 90 degrees Celsius. 
So obviously there is some temperature difference between the two and uh, the concepts of thermodynamics say that there will be a spontaneous heat transfer between the two. So let us see that what is the mechanism of this particular heat transfer. And for that what I am going to do is I am going to zoom I am going to zoom this particular portion which is near to the bottom of the pan. Okay. Okay. So let us suppose so let us suppose that this is red hot I should not say red hot basically red is denoting hot okay so this is the hot solid pan bottom of the solid pan which is at 90 degrees Celsius now this is a solid obviously its molecules will be vibrating and the intensity of that vibration is given by 90 degrees Celsius right and above this pan there is some water right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the layer of water which is immediate which is in just in the neighborhood of the solid pan okay now these molecules are in random thermal motion and intensity of these molecules is based on 30 degrees celsius but the intensity of vibration of the molecules of the solid pan so inside the pan there are molecules everywhere there are molecules at the surface also right so these molecules are vibrating with an intensity denoted by 90 degrees Celsius, isn't it? So obviously the thermal energy of these surface molecules is greater than the immediate water molecules, right? The thermal energy of these surface molecules, that is those of the solid, is higher than the water molecules. So when they, they are vibrating, they, are colli they will collide with the molecules of the solid resulting in transfer of thermal energy, right? Right? So as a result, what would happen is that this particular layer of water which was initially at 30 degrees Celsius, it might change its temperature to maybe 30 de 33 degrees Celsius. Fine. Now the remaining water is still at 30 degrees Celsius. And we know that for fluids, particularly for fluids, in fact not only fluids, even solids also, the density of the substance is uh, sensitive to its temperature. So as the temperature increases, the density of the substance decreases. Therefore, the bulk mass, the bulk mass, we will have a density higher than the layer of the water which is in immediate vicinity of the solid surface. Therefore, this is at lower density, it is lighter and the bulk mass it has, is at higher density, it is heavier. So we know that uh, within fluids, if a particular mass is at lower density, buoyant forces will crop in and uh, as a result of these buoyant forces, this lighter portion will start moving up. Isn't it? Isn't it? So what would happen is, that this particular layer of water which has gained some energy from the solid pan it will move up because of the buoyant forces and transfer this thermal energy from the lower region of the pan to the upper region isn't it so transfer of thermal energy which is known as heat now this this particular phenomena which was at the uh, at the solid surface this is collision this is intermolecular collision it is known as uh, it is because of vibration of the solid, so this is conduction and this bulk motion, this collective motion of the water molecules, this is known as advection, fine? So if we talk of this particular scenario, there is some conduction at the immediate layer, at the immediate layer of fluid near to solid surface, followed by advection in the bulk mass, right? Now we also know that apart from this bulk motion, Apart from this bulk motion, the, the, the molecules of the fluid are moving randomly also, right? So some molecules, some molecules might diffuse out of the bulk stream, again resulting in transfer of energy, right? So there is some conduction, there is some advection, as well as there is some diffusion. So this whole scenario is known as convection and it is involved whenever there is transfer of heat from some solid surface to liquid or between a liquid mass as a result of bulk motion. Fine. So this is what the convection is all about. So whether you are uh, uh, whether you are boiling water or you are trying to uh, solidify some cool uh, some hot solid surface by uh, adjacent fluid, everywhere there is some convection. Fine. Now let us have a look at the third mechanism also and that mechanism is that of radiation. So uh, the concepts of the heat transfers started developing in uh, late 17th century 
with the development of uh, uh, the engine uh, steam engine by James Watt. Obviously we knew beforehand that there was some quantity known as heat which is responsible for warmth as a result of which we can feel hot, right? But uh, the true physical sense was not developed. Even then we had some theory known as the caloric theory of heat which had some defini other definition, right? So the concepts came into after the main concepts came into after the 18th century with the industrial revolution. So trying to, scientists came to know about conduction as well as convection. But what they realized is that the conduction involves some micro level activity. Convection involves bulk motion of fluid that is advection. But there is a possibility that heat can be transferred from vacuum also. Now in vacuum there are no kind of molecules. So there cannot be any microactivity. There cannot be any macroactivity. So heat transfer cannot be possible by conduction or convection. So obviously there is some other mechanism which is responsible for this heat transfer. And what they did is they called that heat transfer as thermal radiation. Okay. And the best example is that suppose if this is the sun, if this is the sun, we know now that the sun is separated from earth or any other planet by vacuum, even though the energy of the sun is reaching the earth. So this is by thermal radiation. This is by what? Thermal radiation. And particularly talking of thermal radiation, basically this heat transfer is in form of a particular type of wave known as electromagnetic waves. Now these waves are combination of electric fields and magnetic fields in the perpendicular direction. For example, suppose that the electric field has influence in x direction, magnetic field has influence in y direction and these two fields together move in the z direction. So this is something known as electromagnetic field and these fields are uh, developed as a result of subatomic activities. By subatomic activities, I mean the activities of protons and neutrons. For example, if there is some nuclear reaction, there is some nuclear reaction that is some kind of subatomic activity. So that is responsible for the uh, for production of uh, this electromagnetic waves. If uh, an AC current is flowing through a conductor, even then some electromagnetic waves are produced. But the electromagnetic waves produced particularly as a result of temperature. That is the activities of electrons because of its temperature and these activities are that the electrons within an atom keep on shifting their orbitals. So once they do so, they emit a particular form of electromagnetic wave which are infrared waves, light as well as ultraviolet radiations. So these three waves are responsible for transfer of heat in form of electromagnetic waves and are called as together called as thermal radiation. Okay, so we will talk of these, uh, all these uh, mechanisms uh, in the proper lecture. This is just an introductory lecture to give an idea of what the subject is. So I hope what you know what the scope of the subject is, you know what the applications of subject are and you know that within the subject we will talk of these three mechanisms it is, that is conduction, convection and radiation and uh, try to learn about the mathematical models for different types of problems related to them. Okay.